Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in this video, I'm sharing with you a tutorial on how to make the peony style flower using the rose template too. So this is the rose template too. I posted the video probably a couple months ago and this is probably one of my popular templates lately and it's a very versatile template. There are at least three different flowers that you can make using it and one of them is the peony style. And so I've had a lot of requests to share this tutorial on how I make it. It's fairly easy, so a lot of this tutorial will talk about some of the tips that I have and also some of the supplies that I use in order to create this. So what I like about Rose Template 2 is there's not a lot of guesswork in terms of what to cut for the template or for each rose and it's fairly simplified. So it's six pieces per rose, any size that you want, you just need six pieces. For the peony, it's a similar process. I use anywhere between six and nine pieces for each peony, and I'll talk about kind of the range and why. So the minimum number is at least six, and I find that six layers per peony actually works really well for smaller flowers. So here I'm making a mini peony here, and I've used six layers. When your flowers are small, I think the six layers works really, really well. I don't have a center for it just yet, but when you start packing in more and more petal layers, it starts to look a little clunky in my eyes. This is totally a preference or stylistic preference and it can vary between people. So if you tend to like more layers in your flowers, use nine or eight. I tend to like less, so I tend to use six or seven because after a while, when you start putting more and more layers, they get bunched up right in the middle. And then what happens is you start getting petals that kind of stick right up. And for example, this is nine layers, so nine pieces. And originally I did like the look, but what happens is it starts, in my eyes, it starts bunching up and then you lose a lot of the individual layers or what I feel like makes the peony special. You have all these individual layers here that if you start stacking many of them, eventually, to me, it just looks like there's really no difference um, between layers and you just get the flower that just has a lot of pieces, but to me, it loses a lot of that look to it. And what I mean too is like when you stack too many petals or petal layers in the center, these end up being a little taller than what I would prefer. So here I went with six again, and that's the minimum amount. They're fairly flat, and that's actually how I like it. They're not all spooled up in the center, and then there's just some petals that just stick straight up because there's no other room in this rose, and so to me it looks a little more natural. So generally the rule for me is if I have a larger size flower, I will tend to go maybe seven or eight petals. If I have a smaller flower, I would tend to go for six or seven. Here, these blue peonies here have seven. I feel like that's perfect for the size. If I had used six, it would look a little empty. But here, again, using six in a smaller size flower works perfectly fine. So here, I'm zooming in a little bit. Just to be clear, this is my second time filming this. The first time I had no audio. So I'm forgetting some of the things I originally said, and I'm moving a lot quicker than I would normally. So I'm trying to be a little clearer. So as you can see with the zoomed up um, look at this peony here, I love the way the layers look. And if I add too many layers, it starts getting heavier and then it's harder to distinguish the petals from each other. So when you use less, it looks a little better in my opinion. So less is more is a general rule that I would go for. Would I ever use nine petals again, like in this rose here? I don't think I would personally. After making so many, I probably wouldn't use nine, but again, that's a preference thing. So moving into actually making the peony, I'm gonna talk about sort of the petals and the tools that I use at the same time. Okay, so I will talk about some of these tools that have come into frame as I'm working through this peony. So this is a rose template too, and I'm gonna keep marketing it as a rose template so if this is the first time you're watching this video and you go to my Etsy shop wanting the template and you don't find it, it will be Rose Template 2 that I'm selling it under and just the peony is a variation that you can make but it isn't sort of an official thing that I'm promoting 
mostly because I want to create a peony template that I like better down the road. This is a great template, however, it's not exactly how I envisioned would be a perfect peony. I tend to like a flatter petal. So this one in the rose template too has more of a peak. So I'd like a flatter petal with more ridges as well as a wider petal so that when the layers are formed, they're more, they cup more of the flower than what is used or what is shown using this petal. And so if you're interested, it will still be listed under Rose Template 2. Now the peony has um, some centers and I'm gonna include two of them. So here's one. This is one type of center that I made earlier on in testing this peony. And then here's a second one, which is shown here. These I'm gonna offer as a free download down in my description box from Dropbox. You can download it if you'd like, use them. The reason why I say that is because if you're trying to find this peony template, it actually isn't a template. It's just, I use a certain template to create the peony. And so that's why you don't see it in any of the images. This is a rose template, and as I mentioned before, seven is a great number for this size here. So I have seven petals cut out. And here, it's just a matter of shaping the petals and then gluing the layers together. And so I'm gonna talk about the shaping of it. So what I have here, this black thing, is a shaping mat. It is just foam, it's like a thicker foam. I don't think you need a shaping mat. You can find things around the home that you could use just as similar. So it, in my Calyx video, I actually used a yoga mat. It was a thinner mat, and so I wouldn't recommend a thicker yoga mat, that spongy texture, a mouse pad. You can have some foam, anything that's spongy. So I've had someone say they use a dish sponge, which I think that might be a little bit too soft. What you're after is something that can absorb some of the pressure you're applying to shape the petals. So anything that works that's spongy. And so this is a shaping mat that I'm using. You can use a yoga mat, rubber mouse pad, the ones that are flat. You can use probably anything that's foamy in texture. And then what I also have here is, they're called metal ball styluses. So they come in a package of four or more. I've seen other ones and I find that this one works really well. It's about $6. I will link all of this down below. So for about $6, you can get a set of four that has eight different sizes on them. So this is the best thing I found to work with in terms of shaping the petals. I have had someone say that they use spoons, I think um, uh, scissors or scissor handles a tablespoon, like a plastic tablespoon measuring thing. Those work fine and I actually have a quarter teaspoon here to show. So this quarter teaspoon here is metal and it's um, rounded at the bottom. And so when I actually use it, and I tested this earlier, it does give me a little bit of shaping. So I'll go ahead and just do that. So I'm pressing really hard with it and I'm trying to round up the petal, and it does give me some shaping. However, it's not enough. I just find that it's not enough shaping, so it is something that if you're fine with the overall look, it's perfect. Go ahead and use that, you don't need any of these. However, I find that these just work really well, just the way you're able to handle them, and just the sizing works. And so, there's four different types. I tend to choose the one in the middle, so not the biggest. So this one here, and what I do when I shape my petals is I go around the petal, not exactly on the edge. So I usually like to go with a smaller side first. So I go along the edge, but not directly right at the edge. I sort of outline the edge of the petal, and then I turn it over, and then I just press the ball into the mat so that it gives me more of a shape to the petal. So I just go in a circular motion. It just gives me creases along the edge and it gives me more of a lifelike looking flower. And you can see, so this one is the one with the teaspoon, the metal teaspoon or quarter teaspoon. And this is the one with the metal ball stylus. It's just a little better. And so it, it really matters what you value. Would you want a set of these or you just think you can make it do with 
something similar to this, whatever you think would be best. I'm sure there is a way to really work this um, quarter teaspoon to get what you want. However, it's just a little too flat. So you can see here, um, quarter teaspoon was the smallest thing I have. I think there's an eighth teaspoon. So maybe that might work. So one more thing I have is I actually have a quilling mold. And this is something that you can use to shape your petals along with some sort of stylus. And I actually don't end up really liking this very much. Um, and it may just be me in the way that I am using it, but I don't like the way that I have to shape the petals while using this and so I will leave a link to exactly where I purchased it but you can see I just have trouble I don't like it personally and just getting it in there and trying to you know work the petals so that I can get some shape to it just doesn't work really well and because the domes here are a little more are larger and they're deeper it ends up being too much of a cupped shape where or like half dome shape where it's, I just want a gentle shaping to the petals so that it, it curves in but it doesn't look like a, a ball like formed like that that's if that makes any sense so I did try this out earlier when I just stick the petal in I don't like the way it works you can see I'm actually kind of struggling with it this might just be me and the lack of patience but I personally don't like it. And I can't imagine that when you have bigger petals that this would work just fine. I did note that when you have a petal that has been creased a little bit like this, and then you put it in this mold, and then you shape it again, it works a little better, at least for me. And when I shape it within this mold, it gives me a better cupped shape. And so, this is probably best if you're forming a sort of ball center, something that folds within itself. So if you can imagine a rose or flower that hasn't quite blossomed at all and it's still in the shape of a ball, maybe that's something that you'd be interested in and then you can use that to create a tight ball in the center. So that's just something that maybe you can think about if you want to use. The link will be down below. But I thought I'd cover a few options first before I started doing the flower. I just don't end up liking it, so I just do it the way that I found works best. So if I start that again, I'm just gonna use a metal ball size. And again, I am using seven pieces. And so I actually split this. So I have three on one pile, three in another pile. And then I have one in the center. And so I, this is kind of how I imagine stacking the petals. And so I do three, one in the middle, and then an, an, another three, and I prepare those in a different way. So for, for the very first petal layer, I just obviously go and shape it like I've been saying. So I start with the smaller side first, and I just roll it around the edge, but not the very edge. It, crease, it gives a crease along the edge there and makes it so the petals sort of curl in and that gives it some of that characteristic um, peony look. And I just do that for the very first three petals. So one tip that I usually think about when I'm doing this is that when you're rolling this into a shaping mat or anything else that you're using, it requires some pressure to push this metal ball stylus into the mat or you, you know whatever you're using. Be careful with your wrists. It can hurt your wrists if you do too many of them. I just felt that myself. And so one of the best ways that I like to create this is I like to hold it like this. So this makes it so that there's a lot of pressure on the stylus and not your wrists. So if you're holding it like this, it feels like there's an equal amount of pressure going straight down and my wrists start hurting if you're holding it like a pencil. So I find that if you're, if you're making a peony, it's gonna take a lot of this shaping and so holding it correctly can help prevent, you know, any injury to your wrist. So I typically hold it like this with my finger right on the ball, top of the ball stylus and I just roll it all around. And another thing is, is that when I'm using a shaping mat, 
My preferred surface is actually the shaping mat on top of carpet. I'm not sure why I like it, but I think it's because it helps, the carpet helps absorb some of that pressure that I'm putting on the mat. And so it does that and also gives me a little, it allows me to shape the petal a little bit more because as I'm pressing this into the mat, it's hitting this tabletop. And so there's not much place to go, like there's nowhere else to go in terms of pressing it down, but the carpet adds just a little bit more give that I could press a little bit more without hurting my wrist. And so I actually like to do it on the carpet. And if you're doing something like this and you wanna go easy on your wrist as well, maybe you could stack a, a blanket underneath or some piece of fabric to help absorb more of that pressure as you're pressing down. So from here, once I've um, curled one layer, I just like to bend that. So all the petals are shaped and then I've bent them to kind of where the petal base is right there. So here are my three layers. And then the next petal, so the next petal is what I think of like the sandwich. If you're thinking of a sandwich, this is the filling. And so this one here, I'm also gonna shape it the same way. So everything gets shaped the same way, but in the end they get, in the end the different piles get a little bit of a different treatment. I'm gonna try to do this as quick as possible, but because this is the middle layer and I'm actually building up, I wanna start adding a little bit more shaping to each layer so that it gets that more, um, cupped shape in the middle. So I want to build it so that it comes closer in the center rather than just as if you were stacking pancakes. I don't want just a pile of these. So this would be that sandwich layer that I was talking about. And what I do here is I add a little bit of a curl when I go around the center. But I do that very slightly. So it just lifts up these petals just very slightly and that'll be that middle layer and I just stack it right on top of this. And so then I move on to my next set of three. So as I've mentioned, the very last layer, again, you do just shape it the same exact way. So I'll go ahead and do that. I would say that if, you, if you're trying to get a lot of these done, what you can do is just make a huge batch of just petals that are shaped like this and then you can tweak the final, um, prepping to each petal in the end, because they all share the same type of um, shaping, and then you just do one small thing to it at the end, and then that petal is done. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop talking and just finish this because I'm, I might be confusing. It's always easier to show you than talk about it. So I'm almost done with this petal here. Okay, now this petal is finished being shaped, and so just to reiterate, the first three petals, I had shaped them and then I just, what I did was I just folded them at the base. And that was my three layers. The middle layer, what I did was I shaped them and all I did was add in a little bit of shaping right there in the center very gently. Now the last three layers of petals, what I do is I actually take the ball stylus and I just rub it and push it so I shape the entire circle, the entire base right in the middle. So that circle that's there in the middle, I push really hard and one way to help with your wrist is also just to hold it like this, so just being very gentle, but then all that pressure is straight onto the ball style, it's not on your wrist, and just shape it like that and it becomes this flower that's almost, or this petal that's almost closed up. And so that's what you want. You want to create three of these. So now I have my three, all you do now is just glue the layers together. So that's fairly easy. So as you're stacking them, let's say I didn't glue them yet, you see that it's starting to form that peony. So that's why I do them in those steps as I showed because it helps you um, build a lot of that shaping already and all you need to do is glue it. You don't have to do anything after you put it together. So I'm gonna start with the first three bottom layers and you simply just add glue to the center and then glue the layers together. So because this layer is like this. I want to make sure that this petal sits between these petals here as I'm gluing the layers. And so you can see this previous layer, here's two petals. I wanted to glue the top layer, one petal in between the petals from the previous layer. And I would do that again for 
the third piece. You would actually do that for the entire flower. So you just alternate or offset the flower, or the placement of the flower. You just make sure that the layers of petals in your top layer sits between the petals from the previous layer. So here are my first three petal layers. Here is that sandwich uh, layer that I said where it got a little bit of shaping right in the center. So I'll glue that there. And you can see it's starting to form a sort of cup shape or it's enclosing in in the center. So that's where I add in these layers here. So I just add in glue. I keep it closed like this and I usually choose a petal. So if I choose that petal here on top, I make sure that I place that in a way where it sits between the petals from the previous layer. And it's just a matter of doing the same for the last three layers. So I do that again. And then one last layer. Now, if you again, if you feel like you want more layers to this, you can just take the tips that I've said and adjust it based on how you like it. You see there, then that that is the peony. So I'm gonna go ahead and show the layers up close. So I love the look of that and I'm very happy with it. So I'll move on to the centers. So for flower centers, it's something that's very tricky. I am a little bit of a perfectionist and I don't particularly like any of the centers that I've made for the peony. However, the two that I have tried and have sh shown, I will actually just link them down below. Um, it's a Dropbox download. Go ahead and check the description box. And if you want to use it, go ahead and feel free. So um, the center here, it's actually fairly tall. I wanted it to sit pretty tall up in the flower. In this one here, I made the centers a little bit smaller. So I envisioned the peony to be a little more closed. So if you've watched my sunflower video and how I talked about sizing the center, the same concept applies. You want to make sure that at least the, the center is not as wide as the height of your smallest petal in the middle. And so whether that's very small and it sits lower in the flower or if it's taller and the center sits higher on or in the flower, that's up to you. You can choose whatever you like. Personally, what I chose for this um, center here is one inch and three eighths. And I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but the petal sizes here for this row template too, I actually size them to four and a half inches wide. And all I do is I take a pair of reverse tweezers just to start it, I clamp one end and just roll. So that just starts it off and I just let it go. And then I roll it. So nothing too difficult here. It's just something to have right in the middle. I think the reason why I don't like these centers is I'm looking for something a little bit fuller. If you've looked at pictures of peonies, the centers tend to be a lot fuller. And I'm trying to get away with the easiest, fastest center possible. And that's not generally a great idea if you're trying to make something look a little more realistic. but. I haven't found exactly the look that I want, but I will probably share that when I do. So when you finish, what you get is a cylinder shape. And what I do is I just sort of push the edges out so that it becomes a wider center, at least at the top. And for me, I think I want a fuller center. So not only wide at the top, but wide at the base. But I also don't want to cut out five of these pieces. It would just take forever. So. I'm trying to tweak something that I like, but also that is fairly quick. So then it's just a matter of adding glue and gluing that to the center. And then you can, what you can do if you feel like it's too wide open in the center is you can just press it in a little bit more. But one of the main reasons why I don't fold the base like I did in the first three layers like this uh, this is what I'm referring to when I say I didn't fold it. It's because what happens is this sort of relaxes the petal a little bit. 
and um, I don't do that for these middle layers because if you do, I find, I find that the middle layers tend to slack. And so don't, if you can avoid it, don't fold the petal at the base for all of them. It tends to relax the petal, have it sit a little bit lower. Um, that's kind of the issue that I have here. I did fold the pieces at the base here and so it tends to slack a little bit. So if you want it to sit a little bit closer, don't fold. And also, obviously, when I do that shaping right in the middle and pressing down, it forces the petals to sit upright. So that's what gives me some of the shaping. I cannot remember anything else that I might have talked about in my original video when um, I first filmed this. And so please let me know if you have any questions down below. I've been making a lot of peonies and showing them off and many people have really, really wanted to see this. So. I hope I answered all the questions that I could think of um, when making this. I did also want to say one last thing is that I originally made this as a rose template, as I've mentioned, and the peony style was actually inspired by Elegant Petals by Kitty, which I'm gonna put her name somewhere, either on the video or in the description box. She first made it like a peony and that's what inspired me to do it, so I did want to put that credit out there um, originally, and that's all I imagined it to be, just a rose template. So thank you for that, and let me know if you have any questions down below. Again, the center uh, file downloads for SVG and PNG will be in the description box down below, and go ahead and download that. Let me know if you have any questions or issues downloading that. It should be fairly quick and easy. Go ahead and send me an email if you'd like, if you have questions, and thank you so much for watching. Bye.